Well guys, it looks like I've just gotten the new Batman and Batmobile 2 pack after all this time. It finally became available on Amazon. It is an Amazon exclusive after all. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at this one and see if this is worth all the hype and whether you guys should check it out or whether maybe this is one that you should skip. Be sure you stick around until the end guys because afterward we're gonna talk about what Batman 1989 action figures we would love to see next. Okay, let's open up this Batman and Batmobile 2 pack. This one has been a long time waiting and this was one of the hottest items that we have talked about in 2023 and it has been a total debacle. I made a couple of videos about it. I streamed about it. It was just such a mess and now it's finally here but man it took a while to get it so I really hope it lives up to expectations. Where's Batman in all this? Kind of wondering what happened. Oh, that, that, that's where Batman is. And it looks like we're getting the tail fins over here that go with the 1989 Batmobile. Let's go ahead and put those on. There's two of them. Okay, count them. One and two. This should be pretty easy to figure out because there's two tabs on one side and one tab on the other. And if you match up the holes on the back of the Batmobile there, you do see two tabs and one tab. So... This shouldn't be too hard to figure out. This one goes right here. So yeah, that's that should be the way it goes. If I can get it in there, which could be easier said than done. What if I slip it in this way? Come on. All right, snaps right on, there it goes. And then we'll try putting this one on, which should go all right on too. Okay, I uh, hope I'm not gonna break it. Okay, I don't think I broke it. This is what it looks like head on, and I gotta say, it does look very much like the 1989 Batmobile. I'm not seeing anything here that really sticks out to me as being particularly egregious or inaccurate. I like what's happening with this one, and the matte color, I feel that it works. I feel like it looks good on the Batmobile. Now let's see here. Rolls back and forth pretty smoothly, nothing to complain about regarding that. And then you look at all the little details on the side here. You see some exposed metal bits like that. You see a lot of little sculptural things going on, some relief elements, that's good too. And then the details in the wheels look about right because, you know, you see that in the movie and stuff. And unfortunately, these turrets over here on the top of the Batmobile, they don't move at all. So that's something that I kind of wish would move because on a lot of those old Kenner toys, you would see something like that where they would move, they would open up and fire stuff. But still, I feel like this is a pretty good rendition of the Batmobile from that movie. If we look at it from the back, this is what it looks like from the back. It, again, feels very much like the movie, and I kind of wish there was something happening with the back of the Batmobile. Like there was a little slice of flame coming out. I wish that there were some kind of special effect. Even just a red sticker would be kind of nice to have here. It just seems like it's so bare. It needs just a little something, but... Oh no, I like the way this Batmobile looks and it does feel very good to me. When you look at the cockpit, there's a little tab that holds this in place and it is movable. So if you use a little bit of force on either side, you can press the sides together and then you can lift it ever so slightly. You don't need a lot of force, you just need a little bit. And then you can start moving it forward because it slides open just like the movie, which is a really nice touch. That's something that a lot of the older Batmobiles from Kenner were missing, definitely. The ones from Kenner, the ones from Toy Biz. You can also take this cockpit and move it back because maybe you want a little bit more space in order to put your Batman in and the slide forward isn't working for you. In that case, it's very doable, it's very easy to do, you have options. So if we look at this from above, you can see that the instrument panel on the Batmobile is actually pretty intricate. There's a lot of different dials on there. There's a lot of different instruments to look at. It's surprisingly complex for a vehicle that is really about $50, $55, something like that in a $75 package. It's not overly complex, but it's complex enough to get the message across. And then if you look around at the interior of the Batmobile, you can see lots of little things happening. You can see the way that the texture comes on the seat and you can see some little panels and instruments next to it. It is a surprisingly intricate cockpit here, driver's seat, at this price point. And 
I kind of love it. It's it's really, really nice. It's very nicely made. Obviously, the major drawback on this one is that it only seats one action figure. And you have to decide whether or not it's important to you that you have two action figures in the same Batmobile. If that's a deal breaker for you, you might not be very happy with this one. But if it's not that big of a deal to you that you only get one seat for an action figure, then obviously this one's going to be a pretty good deal, right? There is quite a bit going on. There is a lot of work that went into this one, and the level of detail that we're seeing, the level of handiwork is extremely cool to see. A lot of little things that you might not notice from the movie have made its way onto this one. This is such a cool Batmobile that it's really easy to like it. I don't know if I would say it's the Batmobile I've always wanted because we've had some good Batmobiles in the past and obviously this one isn't absolutely perfect, but it is still a very good Batmobile, I think, and one that is definitely worth taking a look at, one that is worth checking out. The only thing that could possibly be upsetting about this one is that it doesn't have room for two action figures in the cockpit here. If you support what I do, please click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single video of my when it comes out. And if you're enjoying this Batman 1989 video, please give it a like because these are really tough to put together, guys, and I appreciate it. Michael Keaton's Batman here does not come with any accessories. All you get with this Batman Batmobile 2 pack is the Batmobile and Michael Keaton's Batman. Fortunately, Michael Keaton's Batman does look like a pretty nice action figure overall. I think it captures a lot of the details that we expect to see from the movie. Now, the one, of course, that is going to grab everyone is that he has neck articulation. I don't feel particularly strongly about the neck articulation. I think that it's fine. I think that it doesn't take away anything from the action figure. So I guess you have to use your judgment on that. The sculpting on this one is extremely nice. The sculpt looks pretty much dead on like Michael Keaton's Batman. I'm not seeing anything here that stands out to me as being inaccurate. And when we look at the face sculpt on Keaton's Batman, he does look very, very good. This does look like an accurate rendition of Michael Keaton's face. And I was really nervous about that. I was afraid that we weren't gonna see something that looked like him because sometimes McFarlane toys can be pretty hit and miss on their likenesses. But the movie likeness here seems to be spot on, thankfully. Of course, since we are talking about the 1989 version of Batman, we are seeing all the hallmarks of the design from that movie, including the slightly inaccurate bat signal that we see on his chest that they were doing because of certain trademark difficulties during the filming process. Now, that part right there, that bat signal, as well as his utility belt, are both painted gold on him. And I feel that they work really nicely against the matte black of his costume. Much like the Batmobile, Batman himself, Michael Keaton's Batman, is painted matte black. If you look at the sculpt on this one, you can see it's got the molded abs like we saw in the movie back then. It's also got folds going across the leathery textures of his gauntlets, and that looks cool. And there's also the ridges on his boots that capture that tennis shoe covering that he wore during that movie down to the little pieces on top of his feet that are present on the Keaton Batman costume. They've even managed to capture all the angles of a cowl that give him a permanent scowl as well as the little pieces that eject out from the cowl to make it look ever so creepier. His belt, curiously enough, is glued to the diaper apparently, and I don't know why that is, but it doesn't look bad. It still works for me, and you really don't notice it until you go looking and prodding at the action figure. Taking a look at the articulation on this one obviously he's got head articulation and his head moves every which way you would need it to so that's actually pretty nice for everyone who enjoys that some people are going to be a little bit miffed that michael keaton's batman can turn his head like so and i'm not one of them i think it's fine that he can turn his head if you really want to not turn his head you can just make believe with the action figure and turn his body like michael keaton would for dramatic emphasis and besides that he also has a pretty decent ab crunch and i'm 
pretty stoked about that because it seems like the ab crunch on these action figures just keeps getting better and better. And I'm absolutely in love with that. Yes, please. If they want to keep increasing the range of the ab crunch, I will be a very happy man indeed. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like he really has much play in his hips here, so there's not going to be any kind of hip swivel. And if there is one, it's very, very minimal, so that's too bad. Besides that, all the articulation on Michael Keaton's Batman is pretty boilerplate stuff. He does have the newer style articulation on the wrist and ankles, so the pieces are molded to his boots and gloves. So that's really exciting to see, and they work pretty well. I'm not experiencing any issues with them, really. As a matter of fact, the wrist joint does appear to be molded, but also it has a little bit of that old style flavor where it almost looks like the old generic ball joint that McFarlane Toys would use for the DC Multiverse wrist. It's not, but it kind of feels like it. And it works really well because Batman's able to move his wrist here really easily. And I'm not complaining at all about that. They want to do more of that, that is fine by me. If you're wondering how his ankle articulation goes, the little plastic piece that goes in front of his ankle does not hamper it in any way. It still works extremely well. So that is something of a relief because I saw that and thought to myself, I don't know how good that's going to be. That might not work all that well, but you know what? I'm wrong about that. It works just fine. Now, obviously, because he only comes with the Batmobile, he doesn't come with any extra hands or anything like that. So he's not gonna be able to grip the steering wheel of the Batmobile, which is a little bit too bad. I wish that he could do that, but I guess he's such a good action figure that I'm not complaining about it all that much. It's just something that would be nice to see. However, he does have a cloth cape, which is absolutely welcome. And I believe he has a cloth cape here to help him sit in the Batmobile. This cloth cape is not cheap. This cloth cape feels like good quality material. It feels like it is something that you would see back in the day when they used cloth capes a little bit more frequently. Honestly, it seems like it's a little bit thicker, a little bit higher grade than we would see even then. You can maybe drape the cape across uh, Michael Keaton's hands here to make it look like he's flaring his arms out or something like, I don't know. You might even want to tack the cape up there to make it look like that one scene from the movie where he's stopping those bad guys after they rob the people at the beginning of the movie. Something like that. As it stands, this Michael Keaton Batman, the cape doesn't drape completely across his shoulders or anything like that. It kind of almost does. Obviously, at this point, we should probably take a look at the Batmobile and see how Michael Keaton's Batman fares in there. Does he go in the way we would expect him to? Well, let's open up the cockpit here and see how he seats. And how is he gonna go? Is he gonna go easily? Okay, he actually goes, he actually goes pretty easily in there. I have to bend him forward at the ab a little bit to get him in there. It doesn't work like completely, I don't think. Here, what if I like bend his hips a little bit? Does that work? Okay, let's see, can we get him? Okay, so this is working a little bit. Okay, I can get him in for the most part, but I have to push his head down a little bit to get him in there. It's a little bit of an awkward fit at first, but once you get used to it, it's okay. He has some trouble sitting down completely. He has to like bend forward a little bit, but in the end, it looks like he's sitting in there okay, and I can't be mad about it. Let me see if I can angle it so you guys can see it a little bit. Okay, that's what it looks like when he's sitting down, right? And you can use your best judgment on this one, but it does look a little bit awkward when he's sitting in there, right? A little bit. It's not horrible, but it could use a little bit of improvement, definitely. But we can close the cockpit just fine, and Batman is in the Batmobile and ready to take off. Because of the way that Batman's hands are, I think that most of the poses that you're gonna be getting him in are going to be regulated to fighting poses, which it's not the worst choice. I do think that it's very appropriate for Michael Keaton's Batman to be doing fisticuffs like this. Now, for comparison's sake, let's take 2023's other most popular Batman, Nightfall Batman, and put that right next to Michael Keaton. These two are pretty much standing straight up. 
And one thing to keep in mind about Michael Keaton is that he's not a terribly large man. He's about five foot nine, or was about five foot nine in 1989. So his Batman is not going to be a terribly large Batman. He's going to be a man of about average height, right? So it wouldn't be incorrect to say that the comic book Batman should be significantly taller than Michael Keaton as Batman is. But looking at these two side by side, it does look like they're about the same height, more or less. So that's kind of surprising to me. I thought that Michael Keaton's Batman would definitely be shorter than Nightfall Batman. Batman the comics is about six foot two. So the scaling here, I guess, if we're comparing movie stuff to comic book stuff, is not quite on the money. It seems like they've made Michael Keaton's Batman maybe a smidge too tall. All in all, though, I feel like this Batman Batmobile 2-pack with the 1989 Batmobile as well as Michael Keaton is a pretty decent set. I do think that it's worth checking out. I think that the craftsmanship on this one and the way that they're made are very good. The quality is up to snuff. It's not bad. And if you've got $75 to spare on Amazon, you should definitely give this one a go. I think that you're really going to enjoy this set as long as you're aware of the limitations. Otherwise, you might want to wait for something else if those things bother you. But as it is, I kind of like what I'm seeing here, and hopefully you enjoy it too. I am still pretty upset that this one was so difficult to get. I should have been able to get this one about a month ago, and because of that, my review is coming much, much later than I would have liked. It's better late than never, but still. The difficulties that we had in getting this one, the difficulties that they had in distributing it were a little obnoxious, and the pre-orders that they put up were completely ineffectual. Well, Soulmates, now that we've seen this 1989 Batman, what character from Batman 1989 would we like to see next? Well, obviously, I would love to see Jack Nicholson's Joker. I feel like that is the most obvious one in the world. And I don't know how they're going to pull it off, but if they can get Jack Nicholson's Joker, I wouldn't hesitate to get it because Jack Nicholson's Joker is one of my favorite depictions of the Joker ever. Well, Soulmates, what do you think of this Batman 1989 Batman and Batmobile 2 pack? Is this one that you have to have for your collection? Are you going to seek this one out or are you still on the fence or are you just not interested at all. I don't know guys, let me know what you think down in the comments and be sure you let me know what Batman 1989 action figures you would love to see next. If you'd like to learn more about McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Nightfall Batman, you can check out that video here, soulmates.